Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 11th, 2020, recorded around 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, out here real quickly in the Eastern Pacific Basin, this is Hurricane Alita with maximum sustained winds of 100 miles per hour, moving off towards the northwest at 14 miles per hour. No more concern to any more land masses. Again, this is going to rapidly weaken here starting today and tonight and persisting all the way into Friday before becoming a post-tropical cyclone, really by Thursday even. And again, some swells will be impacting the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas. Uh, but other than that, there is no significant concerns to land at the moment. And for the rest of the Eastern Pacific uh, Basin, this is basically what we've been talking about. The active phase of the Madden Julian Oscillation is passing over this area now. This has kind of lit up the board with two high-end systems that will likely go on to develop this one and this one. And then this disturbance back over here with a, a medium shot here developing over the next five days or so. This big pulse of energy will uh, eventually begin to move over into the Atlantic Basin over the next uh, few weeks or so and prompt for probably some tropical cyclone genesis chances uh, after about August 25th or so. In the Atlantic Basin right now, we have Invest Area 95L with a 90% chance of development now over the next five days or so as this generally heads off towards the west-northwest here. Uh, maximum sustained winds are about 30 knots with gusts up to 40 knots or roughly about 35 miles per hour with gusts up to near 45 miles per hour. Pressure of 1,007 millibars moving generally towards the west here at about 7 miles per hour. And we can see that here on the visible satellite imagery here from the GO-16 mesosector. And we'll kind of just stop this here. So first of all, a couple of interesting things to point out here. Now this is the mesosector domain space, so it's kind of just blank uh, all over that area. And while we there we go. Now we'll load. So you can kind of see that we do have some dry air around. That is for sure. We have a lot of dry air around. And that's the one problem. The second problem is we have some easterly wind shear that's kind of blown across this area. Now, the wind shear isn't a lot. It's probably about 10 knots or so, it's about 10 to 15 knots. So it's not terrible, but that is just slightly enough right now to kind of tilt over this convection and it's not firing right near the center. This is kind of a broad area. This isn't really this uh, a well-established area, but you can kind of see where we have an area of cyclonic spin uh, roughly located in through here. And our convection is on the west side of this, con uh, of this area. That implies there's some easterly wind shear across the area. You can kind of see how there's kind of been some new convective bursts that have uh, occurred over the last several hours or so. You can kind of see that within the new towering cum uh, cumulus and Kaleonimbus clouds in our center. Uh, is located kind of right there uh, in the middle of the screen right there. So again, this will kind of be moving off towards the west here and the shear should begin to relax here over the next several hours or so. This might allow, especially during the diurnal minimum to, or diurnal maximum rather, for more convection to build over the center this evening and tonight. And that hopefully uh, will allow the system to consolidate a little bit better and we'll have more answers uh, by it uh, by tonight, hopefully. Now, if we take a look here at the sea surface temperatures, this is the CDAS methodology coming from tropicaltibbets.com. And a couple of things to point out here. First of all, our system is roughly located in through about this area right in through here. So it's sitting within water temperatures about 26 to 27 Celsius. And this is going to be moving into a more favorable environment over the next few days or so. Again, this is kind of the projected track. And then it's going to begin to move generally off towards the west and northwest. And again, these northern islands through here have to keep an eye on the uh, system as it begins to approach the islands and for a couple of reasons. And we'll talk about why that is here in just a few minutes. But again, these water temperatures are very warm in through this region. And with warmer water temperatures, you typically get a little bit more in the way of instability in the atmosphere, a little bit more moisture to kind of work with. And that might help uh, 95L to kind of better consolidate and generate newer convection uh, generally in this area as it kind of tracks along. And that's going to be very crucial. But these water temperatures out here, very warm in general, about 29 Celsius across most of the western Atlantic 
we shift uh, our attention back over to the Western Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico and Southwest Atlantic where water temperatures have quite nicely rebounded in the Gulf of Mexico here. Water temperatures running about 30 Celsius all around. Uh, water temperatures in the Caribbean about 29 to 30 Celsius. Southwestern Atlantic about 30, 30 to 31 Celsius. Some 29s up here. The Gulf Stream is certainly running pretty warm. So really and truly, it's just a matter of time before something actually comes along to take advantage of this environment out in here and there is going to be more tropical cyclones this year where they are where they go and how strong they are is of course we can't tell right now but there is going to be a tropical cyclone to take advantage of something out in this region whether it be away from land or whether it be in you know a land threat of course we don't even know but that's a concern and another concerning uh, factor here this is from august 11th this is today the upper ocean heat content values and basically what you're looking for is these uh dark reds in here and these greens and, and yellows and oranges that's basically the upper third of the distribution the upper third of the scale and that typically uh, promotes um, more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere and more potential for tropical cyclones to strengthen in that environment if everything else is favorable and even out here in the main development region we'll kind of zoom in here on the main development region and you can really see how we have that upper ocean heat content lined out pretty well in through here so that's pretty much suggesting this area is primed and ready to go with additional warming still likely over the next couple of days or so that will likely put this area into a pretty favorable range for these tropical waves as they come off here of the atlantic uh, of the uh, coast of africa move out into the atlantic basin then it's all favorable through here and again that will kind of be the general story as we head into the latter part of august into september and again this isn't meant to scare anybody but if you live in near any land masses that are susceptible to tropical cyclones impacting those areas it's never too early to go ahead and you know keep monitoring things it's never uh you know you guys need to prepare you know it, it's never too late necessary necessarily to prepare so you know never too early never too late you know if you are in an area susceptible to tropical cyclones now's the time to think about evacuations the time to think about you know how you're going to deal with everything else that's going on in the world right now you know your medication if you have medication that you need can you stock up on it you know have a week's worth of supplies that's the kind of stuff that you need to be thinking about well in advance of a tropical storm or hurricane approaching your area just kind of some food for the thought there now one thing that's going to be pretty detrimental to 95l which is located right about here you can kind of see some of that easternly shear being impinged on the system right about 15 to 20 knots of shear especially across the northern part of the system now that shear decreases throughout the next about 72 hours or so you notice though what's out here this big uh, upper level uh, air mass kind of stretching from a lot of this wind shear coming up and cutting across from the eastern pacific basin a lot of that wind shear is kind of generated through here we have about 30 to 40 knots of shear and as this kind of rides into this environment it's going to kind of cut off and it's going to start to decouple whatever mid-level and low-level center is there assuming if it is a tropical cyclone it just isn't going to be able to fare well in this environment you just can't get a tropical cyclone to go uh, through 30 to 40 knots a vertical wind shear you, you just can't do it so this is going to really decouple the system and really kind of make a run at just killing the system off which will likely uh, end up doing this is just vertical wind shear right now all the rising motions over the eastern pacific when rising motion is over the eastern pacific it typically causes sinking air in the atlantic basin and uh, subsidence and wind shear which we can kind of see that now dry subsidence uh, across the main development region is one of the also uh, problematic things that's occurring and a better take a look at this this comes from michael ventress what we're taking a look here is the convectively coupled kelvin waves and uh, to kind of put it in a brief perspective these browns and yellows phase of the kelvin wave this basically and typically suppresses atlantic hurricane development 
while your blues uh, in here indicate rising air in the atmosphere, and that typically will enhance Atlantic hurricane development. Right now, 95L has actually gone through a period where it actually got convectively enhanced with this uh, convectively coupled Kelvin wave. It kind of passed over 95L and got a little bit of help from it. Now, we have a suppressive convectively coupled Kelvin wave that's passing into the Atlantic Basin now, and this will once again kind of shut off this uh, area. This whole area will kind of be shut off throughout the next about 10 days or so, more than likely, for any tropical cyclone formation. But... This is the Madden Julian oscillation. So after 95L kind of clears the picture, we have to watch here. And what you're looking at is once again, these reds are your suppressive phase of the Madden Julian oscillation <clears throat> that typically works like a, a, like a Kelvin wave uh, where you know your rising air can help a tropical cyclone genesis and your sinking air can uh, suppress tropical cyclone genesis. And right now we, we are in a pretty suppressive Madden Julian oscillation phase in the Atlantic Basin. However, you go to week two forecast, this is the August 19th through the 25th time frame. Basically, when we are expecting tropical cyclone genesis to start really ramping up climatology speaking, climatological speaking, and in the sense that these favorable parameters like the Madden Julian oscillation will be kind of coming over. You can see that that it really enhances itself from where it is now over the uh, basically the Western Pacific that will be moving over into the Eastern Pacific and you're kind of starting to see that now with all this Eastern Pacific activity starting to light up now. And you'll kind of be starting to see that uh, kind of beginning to undergo that trend. But then by the 19th to the 25th time frame, that Mount and Julian oscillation now begins to shift from the Eastern Pacific into the Western Atlantic Basin. Now, typically, a Mount and Julian oscillation is a slower propagating wave than your Kelvin waves. Your Kelvin waves are typically... Uh, you're, they are smaller and they move quicker in the atmosphere. Your uh, MGO or Madden Julian oscillations are larger, they're larger scale phenomenons, thus, they move slower in the atmosphere, typically. And you're going to start to see this kind of begin to move into the Atlantic Basin and over Africa and then just kind of park itself over Africa for a couple of weeks, for about a two to three weeks. And that is typically. First of all, that's typically into September when we expect Atlantic hurricane development to really begin to peak up and ramp. Uh, but with this Mount and Julian oscillation kind of shifting over, that will be kind of loosely shifting over and then kind of stalling in, in the Indian Ocean and Western Atlantic basins. And you'll be in one of the most favorable environments for the velocity potentials in the western part or the eastern part of the Atlantic basin and really throughout the western part of the basin too, this will likely help moisture return to the, uh, you know, to the Atlantic. This will typically also help to just induce a bunch of rising air in the atmosphere. You'll see these tropical waves just line up one after another. And we saw this happen before with the previous uh, Mount and Julian oscillation that uh, came over from Indian Ocean. We had this phase uh, kind of propagate over uh, into early July or late July into early August. And we saw what it did with Isaias, with Tropical Depression 10, uh, Gonzalo, Hannah. Uh, those all originated in the deep tropics. Now, of course, Hannah didn't get its origins really and didn't develop until, you know, the Bahamas and then out here in the Gulf of Mexico and then made landfall in Texas. But it originated from a tropical wave that came off of Africa in an enhanced Madden Julian oscillation that produced four tropical cyclones all originating from the deep tropics. So we saw this happen a couple of weeks ago. We'll see it happen once again once this becomes a little bit more favorable out here towards the end of the month and then into the beginning of September. That's when we should start to see the Atlantic really begin to take off here. So speaking of uh, taking off and 95L, so a couple of things to note here. First of all, this is coming from the Hurricane Research Division over at uh, NOAA, and uh, part of it comes from the Hurricane Research Division. Uh, but you can kind of see this is area 95L down here. Uh, basically, your greens, excuse me, your greens are lower pressures 
and your oranges and reds are higher pressures you can really see this predominant area of high pressure just stretching all over the Atlantic Basin right here your highest area is right here about but you can see 95 L down here we'll just kind of run this forward we go out to the next about we'll take this out here to the next about 24 hours 95 L looks a little bit better this ridge of high pressure trying to build back in a little bit here but you can see one thing that's interesting the uh, this is the uh, HAVS model this is developed this is an experimental model developed by the hurricane research division and NOAA and again you can kind of see that we're really starting to look uh, for these kind of closed little isobars in here and you can kind of see how we have a closed isobar we'll kind of zoom in here so you can kind of see that but you can really see this kind of closed isobar look to uh, the overall environment here with 95l that suggests a tropical cyclone uh, or at least some type of closed low and then almost you can start to see it intensifying as it approaches the islands here and that would be one certainly interesting thing to kind of monitor again this is a pretty compact little cyclone generally moving off towards the west northwest here because this area of high pressure and we'll kind of back this out here this area of high pressure is going to begin to kind of weaken down this ridge is going to be weakening and 95l if it does get stronger will likely move off towards the west northwest here now again the weaker this system is it's going to tend to move further to the west but with this breaking down in the ridge it's going to allow some forward movement of this uh, system whether or not it's a tropical storm tropical depression or just plainly nothing uh remains to be the big question but this will likely uh at least be something by this point in time we can take a look at that here on the gfs forecast this is the uh, six hour out to uh, 18z so this is just a little while ago this is about 31 minutes ago at two o'clock and you can see we have a pretty tightly uh, compact little uh area of vorticity here in the atmosphere and that pretty much lines up pretty well with what we're seeing on the various uh, 850 millibar products again for reference your higher uh, cyclonic spins going to be in the darker red colors here in the upper end of the scale uh, but we kind of move this out here till the next 24 hours again this is a decent looking system it's definitely there in the model field and we'll kind of run this back to just about two frames ago you can kind of see how the gfs has kind of been correcting and wait till I show you the European. It's absolutely trying to correct towards something. But you can certainly see that we have a little bit of a favorable environment. You can kind of see the little bit of a banding structure going on here. This is likely a tropical cyclone. We're very close to being within the 24-hour forecast. Another pretty good surge of tropical wave energy coming off here. But we'll move it out here to the hour, about 72 time frame. And again, you can kind of see a period where this actually weakens and becomes nothing. And then a period where it intensifies once again on approach into the island or on approach closest to the islands out here, the, the northern lesser Antilles out here. Uh, but again, this is hour 84 valid as of about uh, zero Z Saturday or eight o'clock in the or eight o'clock in the evening on Friday. And again, this would be you can definitely see the kink in the ISO bar right here with a pretty Pretty tightly compact area of low pressure here in the 850 vorticity now once again this area of high pressure is going to be dominating out here uh, but it is weakening further out to the west and that is going to allow this to gain latitude and kind of just sneak by the islands but again for you folks up here in the northern lesser antilles just be monitoring the progress of this nothing really significant right now that we're seeing but it is something that we got to keep an eye on as we go forward with time eventually this begins to kind of just get torn up by the vertical wind shear out in this region this is by the end of the forecast period out at hour 120 a valid for 7 a.m sunday very not really anything reminiscent here just a barely kind of a ghost very uh, anemic looking not really anything going on here that will probably weaken a large area of wind shear out in this region which we uh, took a look at earlier has kind of been noted out in that area so likely this isn't going to be anything that significantly strong or so but this is very peculiar this is on the european forecast model the same 850 millibar vorticity product the same 12z model guidance this is valid as of 24 hours from now at 12z wednesday uh, 12z thursday 
12Z Friday, 12Z Saturday, Sunday, etc. But you can kind of see how it shows much in the way of the GFS forecast with something trying to get going out in this region out and through here. So again, the big question is, is it going to be able to intensify into and kind of close off an area of low pressure? Now, indications are that it is trying to do so. And we can kind of take a look at that here once again on the visible satellite. How, again, this is of valid as a couple minutes ago. You see all this area of deep convection out here. Our center of circulation is roughly located in this re general vicinity. A lot of dry air, though, out in this area. So, again, it's really going to be a struggle in terms of how much this is able to intensify and, and whatnot. But you can see isolated showers and thunderstorms trying to go up in this area. Uh, definitely some thunderstorms uh, getting going right now in this general vicinity out here so we definitely might see this get classified as a tropical depression later this evening or tomorrow morning it certainly would not shock me in the very late latest in the very latest though so anyway uh basically that is it for the hurricane outlook and discussion part but wait there's more this is from last night. This is uh, from our time-lapse photography that we did get last night. Just showing off some of the lightning strikes here. This is one. That's another. This one's kind of my favorite. You can kind of see the cloud structures here. A pretty ominous lowering. That is not a wall cloud. That's just rain-cooled air kind of descending here to the ground. Some scud clouds here with a big gold lightning bolt there. Uh, you can see more rain coming down over here. And yet another one here, kind of distorted by the raindrops on the, the glass here, but you can kind of see that lightning branching all the way down here. Very cool, we can kind of zoom in on that and just take a real quick look at that lightning. Pretty cool. So that's what we got last night, but other than that, Hope you guys did go to enjoy today's video. Again, if you uh, you know did like, make sure to leave a like and comment and all that great stuff. It's always a pleasure to be kind of doing these updates for you guys and just you know being here and enjoying the feedback. All right. Hope y'all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow.